from 130 to over 300 horsepower, these trucks keep you in control, your body in comfort. Trucks called Mitsubishi, from your Todd dealer. The diamonds are forever. Two weeks ago, New Zealand played Australia in an indoor bowls international for the first time since 1979. The reason the two countries haven't met too often in recent years is because of uh, a disagreement over the size of the mat they should play on. Apparently, in each country, they use a different size of mat. However, a compromise was happily reached for this match a couple of weeks ago at the Kearney's Road Hall in Christchurch, uh, for which the Henselite Trophy was at stake. Men's and women's singles, pairs, triples and fours matches were played, along with mixed pairs and mixed fours. The game we're going to see is a ladies' pairs encounter. The commentators are Tony Palmer and Brett O'Reilly. Women's pairs. The New Zealand women's pair are Skip Mercia Lancaster and Lee Mary Wakefield. And the Australian women's pair, the Skip Pat Chesham, the lead Hazel Forster. After two ends, the score's even one all. And quite a complex mode of scoring in this spread? Uh, yes, and, a, and indeed a complex mode of play. Uh, for people who are familiar with pairs in New Zealand, normally we play three bowls per person, but in the test games, each person will play four bowls, the lead will play her two bowls, then the skip will play two bowls, then the lead in turn will play her two bowls, and finally the skip will complete her four. So, in all, it requires a pair who are capable of playing all the shots themselves and who are not just the classic skip-lead combination that we're used to in the New Zealand game. So the first changeover of the game. Quite a complex measuring procedure at the end of the first end where a large number of the balls were very close indeed. Yes, the players required an umpire to assist them with the measuring. Just a little bit too far for Mercy Lancaster. <laughs> Pat Chesham was the pairs champion in Australia with Hazel Forster in 80 and 82. Yes, a very solid pair. Beautiful ball. This game is for the Australasian Ladies Pairs title. And counting towards the Henselite Trophy, of course, for the entire Test Series. The first Test Series to be played between the two countries since 1979. Four ball from Lancaster, falling short. New Zealand probably three down on this head. Chisholm again. Mary Wakefield, the New Zealand lead with her third bowl. She's a housewife from Auckland, represented New Zealand in 75 and 76. Yes, Mary has a Australasian Ladies Pairs Title II a credit from 1976. This Hazel, is Hazel, Forster. Hazel Forster. Both from Victoria, both from Melbourne. The Australian ladies building this head quite nicely. They're probably only holding one shot, but Mercy Lancaster quite keen to build the head up, Wakefield. Yes, it gains New Zealand the shot. Showing a little bit of experience. Ten years of outdoor bowls and in her 26th season of indoor bowls, Mary Wakefield. Yes, interesting to note in this game, Tony, that both the New Zealand ladies have adapted their normal styles. Both normally kneel and both are choosing to stand in the international games. This is, of course, a result of the longer mat being used than the New Zealanders are accustomed to and a shorter one than the Australians are accustomed to. The compromise between the 30-foot Australian mat and the 17-foot-6 New Zealand mat. We end up with a 24-foot mat of the thickness of the Australian mat, which is quarter inch. Players examining the head. Quite a lot of this in 
pairs with the two players having such a lot of involvement in the play. Lucia Lancaster, who divides her time between being a stud farmer and looking after her 92-year-old mother. A career of 28 years of indoor bowls. She's an umpire as well. Yes, Mercy is a delightful character. She was captain of the North Island team last year, the first woman in New Zealand to have such an honour. Very popular around New Zealand and all bowling fraternity. Bad luck for Chesham. She'd still be one and a measure down. Just looking at the two pairs, Brett, the Australian women have two Australian titles to the name, 80 and 82. The New Zealand women are from different centres. Mary Wakefield from Auckland and Mercia Lancaster from the Bay of Plenty. How much time does it take them to adapt to playing together? Well, the New Zealand team have had three days practice before the Test Series together. And I think with Mary and Mercia having been together in New Zealand teams before, I don't think they've found it too much of a problem. But sure, this is one of the advantages the Australians have. New Zealand holding one and possibly two shots here. Lancaster's a cool, calm customer. She just takes her time. The score at the stage, one all after two ends. Australian ladies examining the head. Mercia calculating skip. The stage a difficult shot for Patchism to play, though she does have the back bowls. She's running. Well, she shifted that wing bowl. Possibly enough for the shot. Lancaster. Yes, Australia have won. 2 1. Australia go into the lead after three ends. Still nothing in it. Both ladies at the business end looking very relaxed indeed. Chisholm straightens the jack for the commencement of the fourth end. And Hazel Forster about to deliver her first ball on the forehead. Good ball. Playing long ends as well as the men were this afternoon. Yes, I think probably in the pairs game we'll see less of the tactical movement of the kitty. <laughs> Nicely done, but too far. Yes, a good ball there, good position ball for her side. Mary Wakefield. A good bowl from the New Zealand lead, giving her skipper back bowl a solid position. Lancaster. <laughs> Both pairs sounding each other out at this stage. This mat taking very wide green and both combinations taking a little time just to adjust to the draw of the mat. Or the carpet as the Australians would prefer to it. Certainly Pat Chisholm's not having too many problems at this stage with her drawing. Lancaster now. 
Kenshi Counter. Again, a little wide from the New Zealand skip. A little frown on Mercia's face as they change over and assume their positions on the head. <laughs> Hazel Forster, her third bowl. Good bowl from Forster. Giving the Australians two. Yes, in a good position at this stage. Ursula Lancaster indicating to Mary Wakefield she needs a bowl in amongst the Australian counters. Weighing up the situation as Forster is about to play her fourth ball. And this is the fourth end. And not a lot of target area left. Retains the status quo. Yes, a uh, good ball from Forster. We will find with these pairs games with eight balls from each side that the heads do become very cluttered. Oh, great ball, Mary Wakefield. But still leaving Australia two, unless we're mistaken by the angle. Yes, quite probably two shots. A better position as far as on the head. Third ball. <coughs> Very little adjustment to the head. The third first ball. Quite difficult in these Bears games for the, the skips in many cases because with the head so cluttered with bowls, in many cases they're very happy to finish wide of the head and not to adjust the bowls too much and impair the position they already have. Australia at this stage with two shots and Australia leading 2-1 after three ends. Lancaster. Having a run. Well, she moved the kitty back. She's probably only one down now. But not a bowl to really gain the shot, but just to cut down from the New Zealand skin. One, possibly two, says Hazel Forster. Pat Chesson, her last bowl. Oh, a fine bowl from the Australian Scott. There's two, possibly three. Yes, excellent bowl from Pat Chesson. <coughs> Mary Wakefield saying you've got to get into that gap, Mercia. Lancaster, weighing up the possibilities. Again, like the singles games, the pairs are looking to cut down when they're down on the head, not looking to drop big scores. They would rather drop one or two than perhaps go for a risky shot that might bring them three or four, but then again might lose them. The well, same sort of I think score. the shot that Mercia needs in there would be called a Houdini shot, wouldn't it? Yes. So Mercia is something of that sort of player. She's running at the head. Good ball from the New Zealand skip. Cutting the count down to two. Definitely two. And they're looking at more. 
Wakefield moves off to get a measure. So certainly Australia 4-1 up, perhaps 5. After four ends. Steady hand of Mary Wakefield. Very important not to move the kitty when measuring, otherwise would mean conceding the shots in question. With the experience Mary Wakefield has, I think there's little chance of that, Tony. Well, it's certainly close. They've conceded three, so Australia go 5-1 up after four ends. Well, this might be just the right break for the Australian pair. Certainly. Though in these pairs games, with 21 ends up their sleeves, they can afford to perhaps dwindle a little bit behind early. Five, six point margin. It's not particularly conclusive in an eight bowls pair game, pairs game, but handy to have than not to have. Sure, and I'm I'm quite positive that the New Zealand ladies would be a little bit worried at this stage with falling behind, especially in such a crucial game, playing for the Australasian title. Wake. Mary Wakefield learning the drop bowl. Yes, that's one unfortunate aspect with playing on the heavier mat that a lot of the deliveries and the run of the bowls are not pretty. They are dumped in order to get the weight. Lovely smooth glide from Hazel Forster there. And a lovely smooth result. Quite intriguing to watch though. New Zealand women are accustomed, as Brett has said, to kneeling to play their shot. Notice that Mercier on a couple of occasions has dropped the ball quite heavily, which the Australians seem to do all the time, and it doesn't appear to ups upset their shot all that much. No. Wakefield losing her bowl that time off the end of the mat, uh, which tends to show the sort of problems that an adaptation in delivery does have with the weight. Pat Chisholm with her one. First ball on this end and a great ball. Mercia. First ball on this end. It's a fine ball from the New Zealand skin. Chisholm. Oh, she sold out. New Zealand now holding the shot. Here's your Lancaster. And another fine ball. Top shooting from the New Zealand skip. Giving them two, for the moment anyway. Chisholm is changing on the changeover. Comments with her lead. <laughs> Running. Well, she shifted the bowl. If it had turned over one more time, it would have been the shot. Mary Wakefield. And a fine bowl. Skip Lancaster, well pleased with that bowl. A good cover. 
catcher as it would be turned by indoor bowlers. Hazel Forster playing the same sort of shot. Well, great ball. Has they given them a shot, Brett? Well, I think so, Tony, but at this stage in the pairs game with three bowls to come, I don't think Lancaster would be terribly concerned. They have a good position, the New Zealand girls. Wakefield shifting the Australian win wing bowl. Consultation again on the head. <laughs> First bowl and a crucial one for the Australian here on this end. Running. A good ball. Unlucky for the Australians, she played the shot perfectly in pushing the New Zealand ball through, but unfortunately caught the kitty with it and would still lie one down at this stage. Mercia Lancaster consulting with lead Mary Wakefield as to the shot that she should play. I think she'll be pretty happy to play some sort of protection shot. Very difficult to get another one at this stage on this particular end. Mercia. The smile on the New Zealand skipper's face. I don't think she was too concerned about getting near the head. And, uh, as a result, yeah, she was wide and very short. As long as you, you know, you get a run but a good situation for the New Zealanders. They have the back poles. Pat Chesham. Last ball. Get a wing. Oh. Well, that was a very loose ball from the Australian. Mercy Lancaster, you have probably heard of Tony. There's nothing I can do with that lot. Are you happy? Wakefield certainly agreed, and I think this one will be just a formality. As it was. And one shot to the New Zealanders. Play from the indoor bowls test in Christchurch a fortnight ago, the ladies pairs match for the Henselite Trophy and also for the Australasian ladies pairs title. We'll be showing the concluding stages of that match at about 4.30. Coming up at 5 o'clock, it's rugby highlights of today's game between the Lions and Manawatu. But in just a moment, it's the Countrywide Basketball League. 3,000. Get the free information pack by writing to this address or phone me. I'll have it to you inside two days. For the month of May only, buy a house lot of ceiling bats at Winstone and get this digital alarm clock radio worth over $100 free. Plus, you'll be in the bat super draw for this new Nissan Super Sunny worth over $14,000. Come into Winstone and make the most of these no-risk bats benefits. Buy now, get your free gift, and you'll be in the fantastic bat super draw. So get out to Winstone, they'll help you, so you can relax when there's work to do. That's Winstone for you. Home Decorators. Important news. Tingies and Guthrie Barham join forces to both offer you the helping hand for home decorators. It means expert decorating advice and every decorating need all guaranteed, even on sale items. And now for indoor painters, a great Dulux wash and wear special. $24.50 for four litres, satin or matte, white or colours, at Tingies and Guthrie Barham. The helping hand for home decorators. We started in Otago almost 80 years ago with a single service station and a strong determination to grow. And soon we were just fixing them. We were bringing them in and selling them. And pretty soon we were building them. Remember Humber Super Snack? Do you recall the Hillman Minx and the Soto? When everyone thought me. The 
Todd Dealer Network. We've never been so strong. We're going to rejoin the ladies' pairs match between New Zealand and Australia towards the end of the match. In fact, they will have just started the 19th end when we go back to it. The match between Mercia Lancaster and Lee Mary Wakefield representing New Zealand and Pat Chesham and Hazel Forster for Australia. After the 18th end, Australia through Chesham and Forster leading by 18 points to 13. So the game over 21 ends. The 19th end has just started. Our commentators are Tony Palmer and Brett O'Reilly. Well, this is the second end in a row that Forster's led off loosely and perhaps the pressure could be telling. It's been a long day for this, these Australian ladies. A third of three very tight games. As of course. Lancaster. Her first ball of the 19th end. <laughs> Narrow and a bad ball. <laughs> that Australian bowl that's holding the shot for them at the moment may be a difficult one to move the way it's sitting. Yes, not an easy ball. Hello. Moved already. Possibly better for the New Zealand pair. Difficult to tell. Shot play has been difficult in this game for both skips. And as you say, Tony, bowls like that on the kitty generally prove quite difficult to move. Lancaster. Proved the position slightly and moving the ball around behind, but Australia still holds shot. And with it the advantage of having a five point lead at this stage. Oh. Through a gap. Yeah. What can the New Zealanders concoct? We've seen some loose bowls at this stage, Tony. I think the pressure's coming on, and both bears are showing a few of the effects of that pressure. Wakefield. A little dejected looking at this stage, Mary Wakefield. Hazel Forster looking to take that back bowl out. Too short. But Australia's still holding shot. Can she retrieve the situation? Running at the head. She shifted the kitty. Australia's too hard. 
a much better position for the New Zealand pair now. Oh, she's taking her own bowl out. And left one to replace it, but uh, is Australia still holding shot? I think they're holding shot. Uh, Lancaster will be looking to see how best she can attack it to gain shots on this end. From a bowler's point of view, Australia is still holding shot. Took a good shot for Lancaster to come across the head. Just slipping underneath that white line. Yes, it'd be an easy shot to play if you could bounce off the other end, wouldn't it? Certainly, Tony. There's Mercia. Crucial ball for her team stakes. Played it well. Yes, she might get the shot. Yes, Mary Wakefield raises the finger. Got yeah. the shot. So a chance of nothing else to salvage some pride for the New Zealand ladies. 18-13 down after 18 ends. Still the, ninth, the 19th nearly completed. If they could secure one here, Tony, would still leave the margin only four points. And with eight bowls, and the way they're playing, I think New Zealand are capable of winning this game. But Pat Chesson holds a lot of those keys with this spot. Well, she pushed the Australian second shot through, followed through herself, but not good enough to gain the shot. New Zealand holds shot, so 18-14, Australia lead after 19 ends. Well, this really is the crucial end for New Zealand. They'll be looking to score well, at least a three. Though Mercia is a good pressure player, she'll be looking to have a little bit of leeway going into that last end, and I'm sure that would mean being trailing perhaps only by one shot. See the urgency in Pat Chesson now. Draw the shot, Hazel. Starting to talk to her lead a wee bit more. Demanding a certain standard of goals. And Forster draws the shot. Wakefield again. Lancaster. Seems to be able to find some heart in most bowls her partner plays. Plenty of, plenty of applause from the Australian contingent sitting immediately behind the game. Lancaster. Never yet known Australians to need any prompting to applaud when they're winning. No, they have shown definitely to show that. And Mercy Lancaster says, I'll give you something to clap about, and the New Zealand supporters rise to the occasion. So, New Zealand three. Well, it's sitting right on that bar. The situation which really is tailor made for the sort of points they're looking to score on this end. Pat Chesson, I'll continue to retreat, retrieve the situation. She can reduce it by one. And she's opened a hole on that side of the head. Now, Mercy Lancaster wanders up. It's where we want one, says Mary Wakefield. In that gap. Yes. <laughs> Put one in that gap so that you can't split it, says Mary Wakefield. Forden also with the kitty towards the end of the mat. They can force the Australians to attack. The New Zealanders can only hope perhaps for a kill. Lancaster. Well, 
good bowl. Pat, you better have a look. Despite she didn't shut that gap, she gave herself a back bowl. Australians with a good chance to play in that spot, but difficult on a long end with the balls moving around a lot. Long term, the price is not necessarily cheap. You could even get across the road, I don't think so. Pat Chesson. Trouble. Millimetres away from killing it. Yes. There's yeah. Elaine Kester, looks at her own bowls and looks at Mary Wakefield and says, well, what are we going to do here? I think New Zealand's still holding two. Yes, possibly even three, Tony. Lankless says, don't be scared of it. <coughs> Crucial situation for the New Zealand woman. Oh, playing on the edges. Good ball of Wakefields, while a little bit short and blocks that hand. Mary, a little smile on her face. So, certainly cutting down the opportunities. Yes, and possibly not too keen to be boisterous. Oh, that's one way of getting closer. If they've done it, I think Australia takes the shot off. Mary Wakefield asked to play that bowl off. I'm sure we're going to have well, a closer look in a minute. Hello. Oh, she got it that way. That's an exciting end. New Zealand holding two. Highly unorthodox shot. The crowd and Mercy Lancaster were ooing and ahhing a little bit. I think the kill looked on, but she got the shot and really New Zealand now with a very good position on the head. A wick. Cuts it down in two shots. Mercia having a good look at the head. Fairly good opportunity for her to draw on either hand. She has two bowls to promote on her forehand and one bowl to wick off of her own on the backhand. And the backhand is Mercia has chosen. She didn't gain much, one on, one off. One bowl off the mat and the status quo remains. Like New Zealand holding two. To like you don't take the cake, that's for sure. Now, but I just wonder if you get rid of one. Hazel Forster's said to Pat Chesham, now if you play through onto our black bowl, which is the third shot, perhaps you can get rid of one. But that killer's looming ominously. Yes, I think you can take, you know, so just be careful. She's going to take the risk. Literally inches away from a kill. It's narrow. Oh. Finds a hole that didn't look as if it existed from our angle. It's only just coming out of third shot. Yeah, it's just rest on there. It's a third shot. That's the kind of... Plan that they've got to put into operation to try and get the third. They've got two. And they certainly need the third. It'll be a tasty little shot if she can get it. She's narrow. Well, still two. Pat, the Aunt Mercy shakes her head. We're going to go in the last end to uh, after this. <laughs> What do you do? Come up well, Hazel Force is already conceding the fact that they should go into the last end two up. Yes, and it is dangerous in that it's, it's an unlikely possibility, but Australia do only have one bowl on that head and should Chesson get a little bit too over Keen, they could possibly drop four. Yes, so don't don't be rash. Don't be rash. You heard the words? 
and I'm sure Pat Chesson will be following the advice. Oh, she pushed that ball out. Didn't change the situation though. New Zealand 2, 1840. 1860, should we say. New Zealand go into the final end, two down. Two skips, retrieve their scorecards from the end of the head. Mary Wakefield delivers the kitty for the last year. Well, it's been a great game, Tony. Nice way to go into the last end, though. Two up. It's Mary Wakefield. Kicks off. I think unless they can drag out something extraordinary, the New Zealand women are looking at a narrow defeat. Yes, quite possibly. Hazel Forster, great ball. Hazel's played superbly. Yes, I, I think it's safe to say without being unfair to anybody that Forster's personal play has been the main reason why Australia are ahead. She's played some very good balls. Mary Wakefield just a little bit short. Zealand ladies fours who, after suffering a 37-5 defeat in their first round, have come back and won the Australasian title. Great performance. Mercia Lancaster, in the meantime, is looking for the Australasian women's pairs title. And with that bowl, really, things are starting to look grim. Every bowl used, the odds get greater in favour of Australia winning. Pat Chesson puts her hands on her head. She didn't want to leave that split open for Lancaster. Another lolly. I didn't want to bowl there either. And Mercia comes back. Wick. Yes. Lancaster. Unfortunately, he took one of her own bowls off, so she's making it difficult with the fact that after four bowls, New Zealand only have two of them on the match. <laughs> Nevertheless, chances still there for New Zealand. Well. Mary Wakefield holds the key in this game because it's going to be up to her to break that head up and give Mercy Lancaster something to work with. And Mary Wakefield knows it. Final end in the ladies' pairs. Australia leading New Zealand 18 16. Well, the kitty moved. New Zealand still two down, but in a position now where they can. Possibly draw two shots to it. They have three bowls to do it. Hazel Forster. So the way she's been drawing, I can't imagine her getting in there first. What's happening with this one? Oh, it's a great bowl from Forster. Special bowl. Lancaster just quietly indicates to her partner. 